conscious during your own resuscitation? Yikes. A new Danish study is raising awareness of the rare but disturbing phenomenon of patients being awake during CPR. A doctor at the Euro Anesthesia Congress in Copenhagen presented the case of a 69-year-old man who went to the hospital after three days of indigestion but suffered cardiac arrest while being admitted. A medical team immediately began chest compressions. CPR was administered for the next 90 minutes, with the patient reportedly showing signs of conscious awareness throughout. A high level of awareness during CPR is extremely rare, according to experts, since blood flow to the brain is often insufficient. Strangely, the man's heart remained non-functioning and without electrical activity, which caused him to lose consciousness each time doctors held off on CPR. Despite being given several shots of epinephrine, his heart failed to restart on its own. The man eventually died after compressions were stopped for good. An autopsy later revealed that the patient suffered a complete aortic dissection, a lethal condition in which blood is forced between the inner and outer aorta layers. Since the decision to terminate CPR happened while the man was still conscious, it raised serious ethical questions, including the use of sedation when resuscitating patients. Never heard of that one before? Girl born with heart outside her chest. This eight-year-old girl suffers from a rare congenital condition and is currently stateside seeking treatment. Virsavia Boren, born in Russia, suffers from thoracoabdominal syndrome. The condition affects five in one million people. Her heart is covered by a thin layer of skin and she's missing part of her chest bone, a diaphragm, and ab muscles. Boren has to be careful everywhere she goes, for obvious reasons. Her mom launched a crowdfunding campaign to raise money for her medical bills in 2015, which raised over 70 grand. Unfortunately, after traveling to Florida for an operation, doctors told the young girl her blood pressure was too high to operate. So while Boren works on getting her blood pressure down, she's still just busy being an overactive eight-year-old. Boy's heart stops after eating a hot dog. A boy who ate a heart stopping hot dog is the subject of a strikingly odd new medical study. A report in the medical journal Pediatric describes how a nine-year-old boy's heart stopped beating after he began eating a hot dog in Istanbul, Turkey. He was later resuscitated. Choking can lead to cardiac arrest in children, but in this case, medical staff found the hot dog stimulated the boy's vagus nerve, which in turn triggered an abnormal rhythm that caused his heart to stop. Upon further investigation and an electrocardiogram, he was found to have a rare life-threatening heart rhythm condition known as Brugada syndrome. The child was later implanted with a defibrillator to help regulate the abnormal heart rhythms via electrical impulses. The condition is reportedly inherited and more common among those of Southeast Asian descent. New study says it's possible to sweat blood. Are you one of those people that's always sweating? Have you ever sweat blood though? A 21-year-old Italian woman was found to have been bleeding intermittently from her face and palms for three years. She was eventually diagnosed with blood sweating or hematohydrosis. This condition causes blood to seep out of unbroken skin like normal perspiration. It's most common on the face, ears, nose and eyes and is often associated with fear and emotional stress. The woman was treated with a beta blocker normally used to regulate blood pressure and heart rate. The medicine did not stop the bleeding, but she did experience a marked reduction in symptoms. Medical experts still don't know what causes the condition. AIDS-resistant kids found in South Africa. 60% of young kids infected with the human immunodeficiency virus, aka HIV, will usually die within two years. But for a select group of African children, a built-in defense is keeping the virus at bay. Scientists discovered about 170 HIV-infected children in South Africa who did not develop AIDS despite having high levels of the virus in their blood. They called the children non-progressors. The children aged five and older were infected in the womb and remain healthy, even without receiving antiviral treatment. In most patients, HIV cripples the immune system 
by infecting CD4 T cells that respond to the viral threat. Higher activation results in more widespread infection, often leading to AIDS. By contrast, low levels of immune activation are seen in non-progressors, whose weak immune systems don't engage the virus. Their T cells were found to have low levels of the receptor protein CCR5, which is used by the HIV virus to enter cells. Fewer particles get in, resulting in fewer cells dying. This ultimately stops the virus from infecting target cells, and has previously been seen in monkeys. A similar immunity is found in a small percentage of adults, but in their case, mounting a strong immune response is the best way to beat the virus. Hedgehog brought in with case of balloon syndrome. This is your typical everyday run-of-the-mill hedgehog, and this is what a hedgehog looks like when he's filled up with gas. A wild hedgehog was spotted in Doncaster, England earlier this week, wandering around in circles blown up like a beach ball. At twice his normal size, vets realized he was suffering from a rare case of balloon syndrome, which is unique to hedgehogs, whereby gas collects under the skin. This irregularity may have been caused by an infection or an injury, releasing gas into the cavity under the animal's skin. To reduce the buildup and bring him back down to size, the vet simply used a needle to pop the hedgehog, slowly draining the air out. If the hedgehog hadn't been brought in, pressure from the gas on his internal organs could have led him to suffocate or die from starvation. According to the BBC, doctors say he is eating well, offering hope for a full recovery and a return to the wild. Dentists keep dying from IPF. CDC doesn't know why. Health officials are trying to figure out why dentists in Virginia have been dying of a rare form of lung disease. Officials have identified nine dentists, or dental workers, who are diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, IPF, all of whom were treated at the same specialty clinic in Virginia. Of the nine cases, seven have died. Around 200,000 people in the U.S. have IPF at any one time. The CDC found that dental professionals were 23 times more likely to have IPF than the rest of the population. IPF causes scarring of the lungs and can be treated, but not cured. Over time, sufferers have difficulty getting oxygen to the body's vital organs, like the heart and brain. Signs of IPF include shortness of breath, a chronic and dry cough, weight loss, fatigue, joint and muscle pains, and club fingers or toes. Doctors still don't know what causes IPF. Patients usually live three to five years after being diagnosed. 